So today I am doing my spoiler free review of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. gonna be much of a review let's be honest this is gonna be more of a like spoiler free gush and me just trying to wrap my head around how much I loved this book and how I'm trying to recommend it to you without spoiling anything and sounding like a rambling idiot so that's that's the theme of today is don't spoil the book Jesse and make everybody else want to read it by gushing about it <laughs> So there's that. We're just gonna go with it. Um, I'm really not prepared for this. I'm not prepared for this review. I don't really have notes. I have like some bullet points, but that's about it. We're just going off my feelings for this one. So this should be a fun ride. So Addie LaRue, what can I not say about this book? It's so good. It's definitely not what I normally read <laughs> at all. Um, it is light fantasy, maybe more magical realism, very heavy on the historical fiction side of the world, um, which normally, not my jam. It's very character driven, whereas normally I want a more fast moving plot. This is definitely not a fast moving book. It's very character heavy, it's slower, and it's very atmospheric. And normally those are things I don't love, but for some reason, I just loved everything about this story. This is about a girl in the 1700s who is basically forced into a marriage and she doesn't want it. Which, I mean, why would she? She doesn't want that shit. She wants to live. She wants to experience a life outside of her small, small village in France. And she decides to do this by running away from her marriage. And she's been warned constantly throughout the years not to pray to the gods that answer in the dark. And as she's running, she's, she's just praying to these ancient gods, right? Um, she doesn't realize it has gotten dark and someone finally answers. And when this god of darkness answers, she tells him what she wants. She wants to live. She wants to experience life. And all she has to trade is her soul. So, I mean, why not? Let's just trade souls. And that is how Addie LaRue becomes immortal. But she's not just immortal. She lives a life forgotten. And that is because when you make a deal with the darkness, it's, it's not sunshine and rainbows, y'all there's always a catch, right? Her catch is that she's gonna be forgotten. And basically she can't leave a mark on the world. As soon as she is away from someone, they don't remember ever having met her. And it's not even just that, it goes deeper than that. She can't write, she can't draw anymore. She can't create anything, um, she can't, cut you and leave a lasting mark like nothing she can do nothing she can't even cut her own hair because nothing about her changes and it's just so cool the way B. E. Schwab kind of came up with this system of you know what does this curse mean like as of like turning the corner forgetting her or just out of eye range or is it shutting a door like she thought of everything when she was writing this book and I love just like the little details of it and so Addie lives this invisible life for 300 years until she runs into Henry this boy at a bookstore who remembers her and that's kind of where our like main plot I feel like starts is when she meets the boy who remembers and it's just a beautiful story and it is kind of a love story but not really it is not like romance heavy 
It's very romance light, which if you've been around here for a minute, I actually like. Some of the main criticisms I've heard is that the romance is boring, but I actually like that. Um, I'm married and romance isn't all fun and passion and sometimes it's boring. Sometimes it's sitting on the couch drinking coffee one morning together, just talking about your day. And sometimes it's just laying in bed watching a movie. Like, it's boring. And I love that. I like that a lot of the love story is boring, <laughs> I guess. Like, it's, it's real and relatable and beautiful. And it shows that that's all Addie wants is someone to drink coffee with. Someone who, when she wakes up in the morning, will remember who she is from the night before. And it's just so beautifully done. And I loved Henry. I know he's another main complaint that people had, but I enjoyed him so much. His representation of anxiety just hit home with me because I relate so much to that. Like, my anxiety relates to Henry's anxiety. Like, being that person that is a people pleaser, that wants to make everybody happy, that feels like that is their purpose in life, is to just make other people happy, even at your own demise. Like, I relate to that so much. And I felt that she did such a good job of subtly showing that in Henry's character. And... I just, I just loved it. And then we have Luke, who I have been calling Luce, but I saw on a VE Schwab's Instagram that it is pronounced Luke. So there's that. In my head, it's still Luce, short for Lucifer, but you know, that's my headcanon. <laughs> he is the darkness. He is not actually the devil. He is older than the devil, older than our gods. Like, he is the darkness and I love him. I love his and Addie's relationship throughout this story. They're just dynamic between the two of them. He is constantly trying to get her to give up, constantly trying to get her to just surrender to him and give up her soul and she won't. And it infuriates him, but it also fascinates him. And we get to see this, this relationship between the two of them. And he says he loves her, but she says that that's not love. And it's just so interesting. And it's just a really cool dynamic of he's, he's gaslighting her. He's not this like good person, but like he has these moments that you're like, you know, I kind of get it. I kind of understand. And I love that. I loved it so much. Their, I'm trying not to spoil anything, but like their relationship and where it goes and ends after 300 years, like it is just such a beautiful roller coaster ride. And I would have it no other way. One of my favorite parts about this book was the settings. We travel through 300 years of history and we go from France to Italy and then to Germany and then we're in the United States and it's just so well done, well researched, well thought out. We get to see like moments in history. We get to see wars and revolutions. We get to see these real life figures that you will recognize from history. We get to, you know, there's mention of Beethoven and Van Gogh and there's like mentions of like artists and writers and people throughout history and world leaders and it's like really cool how she used these like real life inspirations for this fictional world. I absolutely love that. Especially the part with like, with, um, I think it was Beethoven. Y'all, that was 
so cool. It was either Beethoven or Mozart. And then we get to see like philosophers and just like real points in time. And we get to see how Addy changes and adapts depending on the time in history. You know, it starts out like a girl can't be just by herself in the 1700s. So that starts out being like really awkward. And then going through history, like sometimes she has to dress up and pretend to be a boy. And then she ends up being like a spy during one of the wars. And it's just so cool seeing all these little real life inspirations and how it shapes Addie and how it shapes the story. It really felt like some of these super atmospheric settings were a character in themselves. They were just beautiful and well done. And I think that might have been one of my most favorite parts of this book is the settings. Like, it was just beautiful. I know one thing I wanted to kind of touch on is some of the criticisms that I've seen. And while I completely understand where people are coming from, it's just not something that I either had an issue with or that I even really noticed or knew about. Um, one thing I know that has been like a constant criticism is that this book was marketed as a love story between a girl and the devil. Now, maybe it was originally marketed that way. I never saw that. So that might be why I'm like, oh, I mean, it wasn't. But, you know, maybe it originally was and then they changed it. I don't know, but it was definitely not a love story between a girl and the devil. If that is what you're wanting, which it seems like a lot of people were, this isn't it. <laughs> it's just not. But it's just, I love the relationship between Addie and Luce, Luke, whatever. Um, but definitely not a love story. But again, that's a positive for me. So if you're looking for that, then this isn't really it. It is not a love story between the darkness and a girl. It is definitely a much deeper dynamic than that, than just like a love story between them. So there's that. Also, I've heard complaints that Addie fits the uh, not like other girls trope, which I've said in the past does not really bother me. Um, I don't hate not like other girls for the most part tend to like that trope actually depending on how it's done and I didn't really see it in this book in particular because of course she's not gonna be like every other girl because she's 300 years old she made a deal with the devil basically to live forever and be forgotten so really she's she's definitely not but she longs to be normal and fit in and have that feeling of normalcy so it's I don't know I didn't really notice that this had that like not like other girls trope because yes while in the beginning she was I guess not like other girls in the fact that she wanted more from her life than was available to women while in the beginning I guess Addie is not like other girls in the fact that she wants more out of life than is available to women of her day and time. She doesn't want to just be a wife and mother and die in her small town. She wants to see the world and she wants more than that. And to me, that's fine. Like, that's just what she wants. She wants more. She longs for more. So I don't see that as like putting down other women and being not like other girls. Like, I see that as just wanting more. And that's fine like don't all of us don't all of us want to be different and want to aspire to be more than just average and mediocre like I feel like that's pretty common just in real life so I don't know I mean we all have our own different aspirations and goals so why would book characters not have different aspirations and goals I could probably go on about this not like other girls trope for like way too long. I might film an entire video on why I don't hate that trope in particular. Let me know. Is that something you want to see? Because I, I might just do that. Over the 300 years that Addie lives, she kind of finds her way to make her mark on the world without being remembered and it 
is beautiful. I like to think of her as a muse. That is basically what she ends up becoming. And it's just so beautiful the way they do it and the way they work in art and music and literature and all these different aspects to being remembered even though she's not remembered. But let me tell you the end of this book had me bawling my eyes out. Okay. We all know I'm an easy crier. So like things make me cry easily, right? This book had me crying for like 30 pages, 40 pages, something like that. Like it had me bawling and it hurt so good. It was painful and beautiful and just the perfect ending to this story. And I, like, I wish I could reread it again for the first time. Like it is that good. So this is definitely a favorite of the year. Definitely a book that I would highly recommend that you read at least to try out. If you like other V.E. Schwab books, I think you should pick this up because while it's vastly different than her other books, it also has just some of that like really unique V.E. Schwab feel to it that I really appreciate. So I really think it is like her crowning jewel of a book. I absolutely love it. But then again, I have loved pretty much all the V.E. Schwab books I've read. So take this with a grain of salt. All reviews are very subjective. We all have different reading tastes. We all see different things. We all see different parts of ourselves and characters and writers and we like different things and that's fine. But I really think this is a great book to try out if you want to either start reading V.E. Schwab or if you love her already and want to read more of her books. I think if you tend to like historical fiction, you will like this. I think if you tend to not like high epic fantasy, but you like very light magical realism almost that you will like this book and I mean then there's me I love high epic fantasy and I still loved this book so it's really genre bending in that aspect and I just think try it out what's the worst that could happen you don't like it okay move on but I really think this is a fantastic book that will stick with me forever so Take it as you will. I recommend picking this up. Now I wanna know, have you read this? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of this story? Do you like V.E. Schwab as a writer? Or are you just kinda meh on her? Let me know, let's have a discussion in the comments. I want to know all your thoughts on Addie LaRue because it's fantastic. I absolutely loved it. And I just want to talk to other people that loved it or hated it. That's fine too. All right. Well, my name is Jessie. I make videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I will see you next time. Bye.